Hello YouTube! Today we're going to take a look at the state of West Skyrim, a state that existed during the Second Era. Not much is known about this kingdom as it only existed during the Second Era and it consists of the area of Skyrim that isn't actually playable in the Elder Scrolls Online. It's a very interesting thing to look at and it's one of the subjects that has been requested a lot to me as a lot of people seem to see parallels between the East-West Division of Skyrim in the Fourth Era with the Stormcloak Rebellion and the second era division between East and West Skyrim. So, let's take a look. So traditionally Skyrim is divided in holds, however there has always been a division between the eastern holds, the old holds, and in essence the more traditional holds, and the western holds, which were claimed by the Nords only later and whose population is less traditional and in a way more progressive. Now in general Skyrim has usually been a unified whole, east and west working together as one towards a Nordic kingdom, or a unified imperial province of Skyrim. Now, while we see this division in the 4th era with West Skyrim remaining under Imperial control at the start of the game and East Skyrim being held by the conservative Nordic Stormcloaks, we have also seen this division earlier in history, during the 2nd era, when East and West Skyrim were fully independent kingdoms, with their own kings for a short time. The East was governed from the city of Windhelm and the West was governed from the city of Solitude. This division in the 2nd era came after the assassination of Emperor Riemann Cyrodiil III. During his assassination, the conspirators made sure to also kill his allies and loyal friends all across Tamriel. Among those killed was the then High King of Skyrim, High King Logrolf. Now, this sparked the province of Skyrim to erupt in chaos pretty quickly, as High King Logrolf, with the rest of his government, had appointed his daughter Freydis to be appointed to the position of High King. Or High Queen in her case. However, the particular situation of assassination had led the Jarls of Skyrim rather to call the Moot together, so the Moot of Jarls. The Moot of Jarls initially wanted to appoint Freydis as well, however, the Jarl of Solitude, Jarl Svater, objected and started campaigning against her in a really sleazy way. He started to say that Freydis may be an illegitimate daughter of late King Logrolf, and that he should instead be chosen High King himself. So this kind of worked. After his claim the mood of Jarls got very much split on the matter, like so split that they were both crowned High King and Queen. Svater in Solitude and Freydis in Windhelm. Eventually the Holds organized themselves around the one they supported and eventually Freydis, while she had initially lesser support in the mood, got more support after the sort of magical crown we don't know much about that apparently the High King or Queen wore at the time the crown sort of selected her, so eventually they got a pretty fair division between East and West Skyrim, depending on who supported the, the, the High King or High Queen. So this resulted in the old holds of Eastern Skyrim to organize themselves around Windhelm and Freydis in the Kingdom of East Skyrim, and the Western holds organizing themselves around Svartar and Solitude, becoming the Kingdom of West Skyrim. Now this is a funny thing to mention that the High Queen Freydis isn't only mentioned in the Elder Scrolls Online, but she, High King Freydis, is also mentioned in Skyrim. When the Smith of Windhelm wants you to retrieve a sword for, for Ulfric, it, this is the sword of High Queen Freydis, who once ruled over Windhelm according to him. I found it a funny easter egg and, you know, Perhaps it was inspiration for ESO, or ESO was being written while Skyrim was still in development and they just decided to um, add that quest to add a bit more historical accuracy or something. <laughs> well, I found it really funny. This situation of a split Skyrim with East and West continued into the Alliance War, which plays during the events of Elder Scrolls Online. During this period, West Skyrim was led by a man called High King Svagrim, an ancestor of Svater. Svagrim was now old, but he was still determined to rule. And when Eastern Skyrim got attacked by the snow demons from Ekavir, Eke along with Morrowind, <laughs> East decided to ally with Morrowind against the invaders. And during this conflict, the later Ebonhard Pact was formed. However, West Skyrim wasn't in the conflict. They weren't attacked by the snow demons, and they had no part in the alliance uh, as a resulting of it. And thus, they weren't also present at the founding of the alliance. West Skyrim would therefore continue onwards as a neutral state that wasn't involved in the Alliance War. 
Therefore, we don't know an awful lot about it, as we don't know what has been going on inside the kingdom or what their real stances are. We don't know what happened to it either. However, we know that at one point East and West got reunited after the Alliance War. We don't know when, perhaps after the conquest of Tiber Septim, perhaps earlier. We don't know, but we know that they got reunited at some point. All we know is that the division and the differences between East and West Skyrim are still apparent today, as the Stormcloak Rebellion proves. Once again, the more traditional holds are standing with more traditional Nordic beliefs, and the more, well, progressive holds are standing with an empire. So, yeah, that's basically all we know about the division between East and West in ESO. Now, let me know what you think. Do you think that this is a situation that's comparable to the Skyrim Civil War? I initially looked into this matter because people thought that it was comparable, but I personally think that there are a lot of differences. Let me know what you think. With that said, if you liked the video, like, subscribe, those things, you know, the usual. If you want contact with me, you know, there's my Discord and Instagram in the description. If you want to support me in a more personal way, there's of course my Patreon. And with that said, I will make an end to this short video. I'll see.